we wrap this chapter up with the third idea about how covalent bonding works. We started with VSEPR, we improved upon it with hybridization, and now we're going to improve upon it more with molecular orbital theory. The main reason is bonding is not discrete. It does not sit between two atoms. It's continuous. It goes over the entire molecule. So we're going to be using wave functions and energy level diagrams. What this section will do is it will explain the meaning behind each of these you need to have in your mind. You need to say these are the 1s wave functions. These are the 1s energy diagrams. So let's start with the wave functions for an s orbital. We go back to that picture we had maybe before we came to college where it was a round sphere, but you now know it's a probability distribution function. There are two different ways these wave functions can combine. They can add, and when they add, they form what's called a sigma bonding orbital. There is constructive interaction with high electron density. So I don't have it in here, but where that line goes, high electron density, and that gives us a bond. We could also subtract the wave functions, and what we get is what is called a sigma star, an antibonding orbital. It is a destructive interaction and there is no electron density. So notice the picture does not show any blue in between. The other point is the energetics. The more stable MO is the bonding orbital. Notice it is lower in energy than the original atomic orbitals. The less stable MO, the antibonding energy uh, orbital, is higher in energy than the atomic orbital. This is the picture. Let's try to explain it a little bit one more way. Let us say I'm going to add two wave functions together. When I add them, I get a bigger number. Think of it like a bonding orbital. If I were to subtract two wave functions, let's just pick here and pick here. Notice there is nothing there. That would be like an antibonding orbital. To be a little more specific, here is a wave function. It is a sine wave. If we were to square that sine wave, we would have a no, um, nothing there, and that is called our nodal point. Again, this is at a higher level, but I always like to show it when I'm teaching this because we are teaching you the baby steps. Um, it's a lot more complicated than this, but it's not necessary to go there for Jennifer chemistry. So one of them was the wave functions, and you saw how they looked. The other is an energy diagram, and what we do is we show it for the hydrogen molecule. Each hydrogen is a 1s1. So here I have one hydrogen atom, here I have the second hydrogen atom, and what they're doing is they're forming a bond. In molecular orbital theory, we have the sigma 1s, we have the sigma star 1s. What we do is we take the electrons, here is number one, here is number two, and we place them in the lowest energy orbital. There went number one, there went number two. That is all there is to it. Please don't make it any more complicated, okay? What else do we have to say about that? Well, I made an extra slide for hydrogen. We know the atomic orbital electron configuration is a 1s1. We know the molecular orbital electron configure has both configuration has both a sigma and a sigma star. That is how you would write it. Now, when I wrote my own exams, this was definitely a question. I don't know if it's going to be on your exam because they just aren't going there, okay? The other thing I have to share with you is a concept called bond order. By definition, it's half the electrons in the bonding MO, in this case it is the sigma, minus the electrons in the antibonding MO. So when I look at diatomic hydrogen, there's my bonding, there's my antibonding. My bonding has two electrons, my antibonding has zero. One half of two is equal to one. So by molecular orbital theory, looking at the bonding order, we see a single bond, ooh, should be just a single bond, 
And we predict by molecular orbital theory, hydrogen, the molecule is stable. That's what molecular orbital theory is telling us. If I move on to the next element on the periodic table, helium. I've done the same thing with the picture. I've taken the helium atom, there's its 1s2. I've taken another helium atom, 1s2. Both of these are atomic orbitals. What sits in the center is the molecular orbital. Notice I put the sigma 1s below the sigma 2s, and what I did is I filled it in. I have a grand total of four electrons. So if I just kind of put it here, one, two, three, four. My antibonding, my bonding, just what's on the left on the picture. So if I calculate a bond order, I will have two from my sigma, two from my sigma star. It tells me by molecular orbital theory, the bond order is zero. And what it tells me is this is an unstable molecule. And as you know, helium is a 1s2. It has a full shell and it does not need to share an electron to get a full shell. This section covered only two molecules, helium and hydrogen, but it sets the stage for how do we think about molecular orbitals. I'm gonna go back all